Tell us some about the how your daddy would take you around down at Grand. Oh yeah, my daddy was born down there where we had the reunion. He looked, he roamed all over that land. He was born in that house. Billy. Yes, and the and the brick house we stopped at uh, to uh, yeah get directions, get the help, unlock gate. My great grandfather Horace Ribble built that after his house had burnt. It was up more on the hill or up towards the hill. I've never found it exactly, but uh, it burnt down, and he built a rock house. I think it's a big part of it, isn't it? Rock house. Um, over there, it wouldn't burn. And uh, but my my father was raised. He rode horses all over. He knew that like the back of his hand, and he knew all the people that owned it. They had bought it with rules. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, our, our own the land around there. But, uh, he knew all of them that was uh, around there. And he, they'd gone and socialized together. And, uh, He'd go coon hunting. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Uh, so when, when I was a kid, uh, we went out around that place. We went out there all the time because he knew it. When we wanted to go airhead hunting, he could take you right to a good place. And he took me to a place over there off Rock Creek. Uh, it was off Connor Creek, I can imagine. But the, um, he said, look here, I found this when I was a kid. Doesn't this look to you like some old Indian sat out here under the shade of a tree and napped airheads all day long? Maybe he was showing the younger ones Maybe he's crippled up and couldn't go do much else so he could make our heads. And then when he got through in the day, he would stand up and just dust all that off because there was just kind of a, hmm. the little chips, the tiny little chips, just mm -hmm. thousands of them. And he said, and if you look through, you'll find a broken air head in there where something messed up, whether he messed up or he was a kid he was instructing messed up. But that area, area was very rich with air heads. And he loved to wear a head hunting. It just about any time that he had a little out of time and you said, let's go airhead hunting, he'd say, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go out there. And he looked over the same places that had been productive when he was a kid. He had a, little, he had a few rains, it washed his little stuff. You can go right back to that same area and look again, mm -hmm. and the, the, there's chances are an area had use on the surface for them. Mm -hmm. And he 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 has hunted many area heads over that over that place. He knew everything about that. Knew who owned it. We went fishing, hunting, chop cedar post, set traps to catch coon, all over there because everybody knew who he was, and nobody. He had permission from everybody to go on their land. Mm -hmm. We went all around there. And in the, you know, go coon hunting in the dark. He knew it in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have his arrowhead collection? My mother gave it to my nephew Ryan, I think. Uh, is that? I think. She left it to Ryan. My mother gave his airheads to uh, either Ronnie Harold and Graham or Ryan and Vincent in Baton Rouge. Ronnie. I know I know his pocket knives. He had a big bunch of pocket knives, and uh, they went they went to uh, Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Uh, when mother's mind started slipping, and I. I'm going to say it was, to me it was 97, 98 because I spent a lot of time with her. To me her mind was slipping then. To the other kids it wasn't until 2000, 2001. They were kind of in denial. But you know, you saw little signs. And she gave a lot of stuff away that normally she wouldn't have. She would have kept it for us. Yeah. There's a portrait of her, of her uh, grandparents that she gave away. Still the family, but anyway. Uh, but Ronnie Harrell is a, is a arrowhead collector. Oh, well, then he probably has. And he's married to our cousin. So that's that's not a, like a wild thing. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's a good person. You take very good care of him. 
I'm just not sure where it is. You don't think you probably roll your eyes? You don't know what? I thought you rolled your eyes. No, I wasn't rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> and is your mom still alive? She is, but she has a lot of still yeah, alive. Yeah. And uh, yeah. at, at this point doesn't remember her name. Uh -huh, so yeah. she's she may see that if she never see this video, but she, if she does, she won't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. But uh, she doesn't even believe you. If I went in over there and I said I'm your son, she wouldn't believe me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She told us many times Wayne's dead, and I went to his funeral. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've been dead for several years. Good several man. years before she was institutionalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She'd tell people I was dead. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about our, our dad. You know, had this theory. And this, that was just like him. He would just sit there and ponder a situation. And uh, he was a very quiet man, but he, he must have thought things through pretty well. And that, would be, that would be just like him. What did your dad do? Worked in the oil field. Oil field? That's what he was doing just as soon as he came back from the Marine Corps. Uh -huh. After World War II, he, uh, he worked in the oil field. Uh -huh. he, the oil field got crummy around Graham, and the, well, several times. Well, uh, yeah. But the late and the 60s. From the mid '60s onward, it got to where the oil field was not doing so good. And he was and getting, you know, he young, oil field's young men's game. He, yes, that's true. He went to Mineral Wells and become an aircraft mechanic, working in helicopters. And went after school, working, went to school guys like after working there a while, he went to school and got his, uh, the aircraft people called it a A&P, airframe and power. It used to be A&E, airframe and engine, but they changed it to A&B, A&P, A&P mechanic. Once you got that license, you can work on about anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he got a job in Lafayette, Louisiana, at petroleum helicopters, working on their helicopters. And that's, that's where he finished out his working career. He retired from there. And after my mother worked at, she was, uh, worked at, uh, I guess she was an officer. At, at the First National Bank. First National Bank of Lafayette, Louisiana. Mm. And when they retired, they moved back to Graham. And my grandmother had died and they bought my uncle's half of that house so that they could have a house to live in. And they, they, they put a, they had a travel trailer, and they just had a place for it, had hook up for it, they made all that. They had two they acres moved. of land. Mm. Yeah, there's plenty of room out there. So they, they moved out there and just lived in that travel trailer while they completely rebuilt that old house. Replumbed, re-electric, re-carpeted, re-everything, that, that old house. The, the stone house? No. No, it's, a, no. no. It, it's this is my mother's. The other grandmother. The other grandmother. Okay. Yeah. The uh, I don't even know. I'm going to have to study the land records and see exactly when the Ribbles sold that land to the Gilmores, because uh, the Gilmores that I say the kid because he's younger than me, but the guy that was c crippled, I don't remember. Yeah, in the in the pickup truck. Yeah. Yes. It, uh, he's related to to the people that bought the land from, my, yeah. from the Ribbles. Uh, and they were so kind to drive us all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, uh, tell Shelly what they do with Coonskins. Not Shelly, Susan. Well, Susan was yeah. one that was asking about it. Uh, well, they, uh, it, there's a, at times, it depends on the fur market, but at times there's a decent price for uh, coon skins. Wow. And you, you skin them to suit the, for trading people, and you uh, stretch them out. We had a little shack in the back, and we went out there and just uh, just nailed them to the wall. You know, you mm, got uh -huh. them. They don't shrink down. They don't curl up. Mm -hmm. And then when we got the walls covered in furs, we'd go to. I think we went to Jacksboro. There was a fur buyer in Jacksboro that we would carry them to, and and you'd make a you'd make a decent wage. My, my daddy was no stranger to earning his living skin and went during the depression and he was in high school he discovered that 
he could make more money trapping and skinning skunks than a grown man could working all day. Wow. All, you know, all week long. Mm. Because nobody wants to trap and skin skunks. Mm. But he, he knew how to trap them and where to trap for them. And, and he, he, he told me that he was making more money than a grown man working every day and uh, skinning skunks and selling the skunk hides. He, he went over to my mother's house. She was just, you know, a high school girl. Yeah, and my and her father, who was a man that's prone to be kind of opinionated, he's a horseman. He's out in the horse lot. And he's got curry in his horse, brushing his horse. Got and his back to the world. Got his back to him, and, and my mother walks up behind him and she said, "Daddy, can I go to the picture show with Bill?" Tonight? <coughs> and my grandfather, without even thinking, said. I don't know why anybody would want to go anywhere with that skunk skinning son of a bitch. <laughs> and then he looked around and saw my dad he was dead right there. And he oh yeah, go on move, go on, go on. <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we grew up in Graham and then in uh, 1972, um, well daddy had been working in Minner Wells for Fort Walters and just drive back and forth from Graham to Minner Wells. And then Dixon closed down all the bases. Mm -hmm. I say Dixon because I like to blame it on him. And so Absolutely. Daddy, mm -hmm. yeah, Daddy was laid off and, and he got his opportunity in Louisiana. So they all moved to Louisiana. My younger sister, I, I was married by that time. My younger sister went to Louisiana with him and she married, couldn't ask, great guy. Mm -hmm. He is a wonderful fellow. And they live, well, they live in Ethel, Louisiana, which is outside of Baton Rouge. Slightly and north and slightly west. west I think. Oh, I don't know. But she got hit by the hurricane. Mm. Oh. Katrina. No, because uh, Gustav. Gustav. She was, uh, Katrina kind of missed Baton Rouge, or she didn't get the heavy stuff. She got the people. <laughs> the yeah. aftermath, all the yeah. how those so, people moved in. The refugees. We had a when we when one of us has bad luck, it seems like the, it rolls around to all of us. Um, Penny was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was diagnosed with MS, and Mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in the same week. Oh man! And then oh, in the same week. To, mm. um, Three months later, he had a heart attack. And I wasn't and feeling too good myself. <laughs> he, had a, he had a heart attack and had to have bypass surgery. Mm. Uh, so Cherry was the only one that was unscathed at that point in time. Well, she since had to have an ovarian cyst the side of a watermelon mm -hmm. removed. Mm -hmm. Well, watermelon might be a slight exaggeration. Slight exaggeration. <laughs> but uh, Penny got hit by Gustav one Saturday. The next Monday, um, or the next, the next Saturday, I was going to Tyler because Cherry was having a hysterectomy. And then the next Saturday, I was being hit by Ike. Ah. Oh. <laughs> she was stranded without power, without uh, telephone service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, and, and, for a long time. In fact, she was stranded so long that I, I boxed up $100 worth of flashlights and batteries and mail to her. Oh. I paid you back that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and and is, it, is it because... Uh, I had run out of batteries, but there was no the stores to get any batteries. Nobody could get a battery. And then my my crazy cousin, uh, Ronnie Harrell's wife, um, backed up, packed up an ice chest because you couldn't find an ice chest uh, full of uh, foods for me. Oh. And uh, taped it up and sent it UPS as the box, and it came. It was mm. fine when it came, got to me. So. Um, but, and the bad thing was just getting hot. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and mosquitoes, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. And, get, and uh, you know, finding out because I, I needed to stay cool. And, um, you know, should I have evacuated or should I not? He, he wanted me to come up to Fort Worth. And maybe I should have, I don't know, who knows. But I had to be back at work yeah. three or four days after the hurricane hit. So, mm. anyway, it was interesting. Long struggle. Oh, how did that land that, like where 
you know, at, at Graham, you know, how did how did it go from like say when Pooh Ribble died to H V and Aunt Della? I mean, did they buy it? Aunt Della was his daughter, uh -huh. yeah. and they bought out the other kinfolk's interest mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. and they did it because Della was sentimental about the place. Oh, mm -hmm. and 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 Uncle Herbert mm -hmm. wanted to play with pigs and cows <laughs> right. and plant watermelons. There was nothing <laughs> playing for him. Uh -huh. and My dad said it was a tax write off, yeah. He just and, he just uh, had hogs and watermelons. And I'm sure Josie and John could use the money. Mm-hmm. And I I I I'm not sure exactly how everything happened Something. because um it I Nanny Cooch died in 1912, and I don't know if she moved into, I don't know when he moved into town, I'm going to have to check the land records. Do y'all know? I uh know. -huh. Well, there was a lot of that land that, we looked on an old plot in the Weatherford Courthouse that showed the, where these people had staked their homestead, and it was, what, a homestead was 140 mm -hmm. acres? And there were certain legal requirements had to build a house and right. improve the land. There were certain requirements that you had to meet. And I doubt there's very many people checking, but if you, you find Susan Hunt Susan Hunter Ribble's plot where they originally sit, and then you can see each neighboring plot is named after one of her children. Mm -hmm. So they just kept enlarging mm -hmm. the place so they controlled all that land. I bet those. I bet some of those kids weren't weren't even in school yet when they got a <laughs> like like forty a acre yeah. claim farm. But um, I don't know. In the original, when when John built that log cabin, and the I, the log cabin must have been actually in Jack County. Oh well, actually, well, let me go back a little. When he built the log cabin in 1854, there were Northern County lines. Right. And that was all Red River at the time. The whole area up there when Red River yeah, County. Yeah. Well, no, Red River County, whatever. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe you're right. It was some big old county and they hadn't split it up. Right. Um, and then he went back to the family and brought them out here. By the time he brought them out here, I think there were county lines and his property, part of it was on Jack County, part of it was on Palatino, part of it was Young. And the log cabin was actually on Jack County. And in the history books of Jack County, there's a debate, I've never been in the debate, um, but his name is mentioned as he had the first log cabin built in Jack County, but this other fellow short um, had the first log cabin built and lived in, in in Young County. So he gets mm -hmm. the credit for having the first log cabin built. And, um, then I, I'm not quite sure. I guess she stayed there. I'm I'm really not quite sure if she moved it with Pooh in with Pooh or if she lived there. Um, and then and then Pooh bought the land when the Brazos County when the Brazos Indian Reservation opened up. Mm -hmm. he, he bought that land or he, or he homestead that land. And then um, Ed Norman and Sue's grandfather was the first white child born on that property. Now, I don't, that was something big back then in the history books. I, you know, I don't know that it's anything big now. But he was, he was born in that log cabin. And I don't know that, that uh, Aura and uh, Horace might have been, and Josie might have been born in there. I don't know when he built the other house. Do y'all? No. Mm -hmm. no. Uh -huh. And we would go out there when we were kids. Now you ask about the, the division. There's stories of, of on his birthday. I think Bill Jordan was telling this story, but I'm not sure. On his 90th and 95th and 96th mm -hmm. birthday, you know, they had a big deal on all of his old birthdays. Um, they had a, a celebration at the park, and then he went off to his farm. Now I don't know if he's talking about the Bingham place oh. or mm -hmm. or what, and maybe it was. He kept both places, the one in town, because he moved in town at some point, mm -hmm. um, because there's a river road, and uh, that piece of land, 
it was a pretty big piece of land that he owned. The uh, Gateway Inn was there. And I remember that because when they went to build the Gateway Inn Hotel in Graham, I believe it was the late 60s, they needed my grandfather and Faye Teen. And I would think that they would also be trying to find y'all's father to, uh, to say it was okay for them to build Gateway in there because in his deed or in his something or other, he put down that no alcoholic beverage could be sold there to be sold on any of his property. They call it a covenant. Roadhouse. Oh, maybe, yes. Covenant on a deed. That, that no roadhouses, again, that was a term that they used, I believe. Hmm. And so they had to have all their permission that mm -hmm. they could sell alcohol well, they, there. They had to define what the old man meant, and they defined it as a place that sold liquor. If you didn't sell liquor, then Roadhouse doesn't apply. I feel sure I'm not sure if sell liquor said, there. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if they even gained anything from it. My grandfather would have, well, my grandmother would have had an objective to it, but maybe she didn't know that. Uh, I, but he said okay, probably because he built it. Yeah, they said that what what the old man meant was he didn't want alcohol to serve. And it was a dry county, so... A dry county is a pretty easy position to take. Although... But Roadhouse could mean an inn, motel, lodging facility, so... Yeah, so, you know, because it was... They got a definition from his closest living kinfolk that the old man didn't mean couldn't be a motel there. Hmm. And it was odd anyway. Uh, I don't know that he was a, a teetotaler, but I think they gave. I think the lawyers gave eighteen and granddad each fifty dollars. Oh, okay. For helping clarify that matter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have encouraged them to clarify it. Uh, but then, but but the road had the uh, the gateway did have a private club where if you got membership, you could have some alcohol. They went by, the, but but Graham was a dry county. Well, Graham, I guess it still is a dry county. I guess so. But they've got but some they've private got, clubs and places. They've got some well, private clubs and mm -hmm. such. Some strange ways. Yes, I know. But, I, you know, Susan and I were talking about um, Aunt Della's. I say Aunt Della's probably because to me it's Aunt Della's, but it was when my, when my father was a little boy. It was Pooh's, mm -hmm. and we would, but we would go out there and visit the big ones when they would come into town. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a tree with a real long, gigantic limb. And Susan doesn't remember this tree. Y'all were out there a lot more than I, I was. The, it was kind of horizontal. Yes, yes. Yeah. And he would tell me that when he was a little boy, he would come out and play on that on that limb. And that, that would just blow my mind even think my of my father's a little boy. Right. And, and thinking of him playing on that. I didn't see that tree when we went there. Mm -mm, Did no, you? I didn't. But I remember it. And uh, that picture kind of shows it. Mm -hmm. But I I haven't found a picture that really shows it. And that y'all have some pictures of the house. But um, I don't see that tree in there. Yeah. Dad told me that if anybody ever go cut that tree down, saw it up, they're in for a surprise. I must have hammered a thousand nails into that old tree as a kid. <laughs> Every time I'd find a nail, I'd come out and grab it in that tree. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, Granddad H would uh, tell us stories about when he was a little boy out there, and so it's interesting how many generations. But you haven't talked about the five generation picture. I'm in it. Mm -hmm. I'm the last surviving person of that picture. That I'm a true. little baby and my daddy's arms I'm six months old. It was taken the first Sunday in June at Gooseneck yeah. of 48 and he was born in June, January of 48. That picture was taken in June of 48 and then Pooh died in September of 48. If you take that picture and you go to that, if there is a stone wall in the back of that old tabernacle, whatever, great, used to be a great barber and then came to tabernacle and whatever. Anyway, you can take that photo and you can line up and find the rocks in the wall and know exactly where everybody was sitting oh. again on that thing. Wow. You've studied that. 